All right, guys, I'm going to start from the beginning. 2014 Chevy Silverado. Um, this video is in regards to fuel trim codes that you may have P0172, P0175 for both fuel trim banks being rich. Now, this is especially for you younger techs that are about to dive into this kind of diagnostic work. Maybe you haven't seen the codes before. This is something that you will start to see fairly commonly on GM 5.3 liter and 6.2 liter engines. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the truck and I am going to start from the beginning with you guys, okay? Now, <clears throat> This truck has this truck has 90,922 miles on it. We'll go ahead and straighten that for you guys. Now, if you're a younger tech and you are trying to get into diagnostic work and you don't have a nice bi-directional scanner, uh, that's going to be where you're going to want to start. So, so we didn't have rough running. Um, we didn't have anything super abnormal going on drivability wise basically what we had was an engine light on now <clears throat> what we're gonna do here and i'm i do apologize about the glare it says display codes there if i get close but we'll go in and we'll look at the codes dtc display now some of these i set so like the Intake air temperature sensor. I set that because I disconnected the mass airflow sensor I was looking at it to see if it was caked up with stuff on it if it was dirty. I should say um, <clears throat> This code ignore as well. We got 172 175 as you can read the code description right there rich bank one rich bank two now the first thing you're going to want to do, especially when you have codes like this where you're not super familiar, you don't see them all the time, on this snap-on, I can actually go in and I can view TSBs. This one says right here, Diagnostic AIDS for PO172175. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. So, <clears throat> this is pretty clear-cut. Look, all the 6.2 liters. Even a 4.3 Okay, we'll keep going, 5353, three. or condition, a vehicle may have a concern, SES lamp on, rich running, DTCs 172, 175, possible high pressure fuel pump, and what that's saying is possible issue with the high pressure fuel pump. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to scroll down here, okay, <clears throat> basically this gives you a, a general explanation of how to do it, you disconnect each side breather and then you disconnect the main pcv and i'm going to go out there and i'm going to show you but these high pressure fuel pumps can actually leak um internally so the high pressure fuel pump sits under the lower intake manifold it is internal technically internal to the engine and internally they can leak and when they leak the positive crankcase ventilation actually sucks the vapors from around that high pressure fuel pump and recirculates them into the intake or the air is not being metered because the mass airflow is at the furthest point out there so the air that's being recirculated from within the engine should not have any fuel in it when it does now we have a ridge condition so i'm gonna hop out of here we're gonna go back and uh you know what I might do, guys, is I might plug this back in. I might plug the PCV back in and then let you watch the fuel trims. You know what? I think I am going to do that here. Hold on. All right, guys. I'm doing this for you guys because I love you. <laughs> All right, guys. So what we did is we had disconnected it. So I reconnected the PCV. Now the breathers are right here. Breathers are on either side of the air box, as you guys can see that. So I tape them off, right? Now that's not gonna have any effect, well, very, very minor effect on what I'm about to show you because the when the high pressure fuel pump leaks internally, it will create fuel vapors. This manifold basically will pull in the fuel vapors through the crankcase because you have fuel spraying 
into the engine into the engine oil those vapors are mixing around and then they're sloshing around in the crankcase and then this hose is picking them up and sucking them into the intake adding more fuel mixture than what we are desiring by the pcm into the engine which is what creates the rich condition so i had disconnected that and i watched my fuel trims plummet down <clears throat> what i'm going to show you now is i hook this back up and the fuel trims are going to go way way rich here's our scan tool ignition key on i reconnected that pcv so this is what i'm about to show you the fuel trims are what we're watching when we have codes that are for the fuel trims. So, short-term fuel trim percentage, bank one. We got bank two. We got our long-terms. Again, guys, the long-term goal is to keep the short-term happy, if that makes sense, okay? So the short-terms, when I start this up, are going to plummet negative. You're going to see the long terms start to plummet negative and then the short terms are actually going to end up balancing out because the PCM is always trying to find what mixture it thinks it needs to be at and that is reflected in the long term, not necessarily the short term. So we're going to start it up here. So I started it up. Now it is cold, so it might take a minute. Here's the other thing too is you're going to be in open loop when you're not at temperature so as you can see we're not at temperature so fuel trim status running obviously now what you're going to look for is your fuel control so here i'll hop off it fuel control okay we just now went into closed loop just as i was saying that so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here all the way back to the top okay now look at our short terms, negative eight, negative seven, negative three, negative four. Now as this warms up, you're gonna see them continue to go more negative, okay? Our long term's already at negative two, that would not set any codes. When I had initially scanned this and looked at the live data, we were at negative 14 on both banks anything over 12 ish the pcm is going to request a mil uh as you can see right now we're not seeing a whole lot of goofiness happen but once this thing starts to warm up i'm going to come back and i'm going to take a little film of it all right guys been about three minutes now what i'm doing here see me revving it up i am creating more demands out of the high pressure fuel pump as a result we are going negative in fuel trims, which means we have too much fuel. You guys can see the, uh, the graphing data right here. We have too much fuel coming in and the PCM is requesting and actively pulling fuel away from the trims to be stoichiometric. And let's go to like 25-ish. Yeah, we'll go right about up there. I'm gonna keep my foot there. Back negative. In purpose of me revving this right now is to kind of create some oil pressure, knock some of those vapors out of the crankcase. Sometimes changing the oil, this symptom will actually go away and then it'll end up coming back because of the fact that the high pressure fuel pump is leaking internally. Well, I'm gonna show you guys fuel control strategy on a GM, okay? Disconnected the mass airflow. So let's say we wanted to rule out the mass airflow. When I disconnect this, if the mass airflow is causing our fuel trims to go really negative, If the mass airflow is responsible for the negative trims, we should see the trims instantly go back. Now we were at negative 14 and negative 12 um, prior to me just disconnecting that. 
now we're at negative 19, negative 19, which is essentially pegged, pulling as much fuel away as possible. So what this tells us here is that if the mass airflow is reading a significantly lower volume of air than what we actually had, or let's say it was reading a higher volume of air than we actually had, that will affect your fuel trims, plus and minus. So the fact that we disconnected it and our fuel trims are still negative, and they're not just instantly coming back up into stoichiometric, that tells us that the mass airflow is not the culprit for our negative fuel trims, if that makes sense. Basically what the vehicle is doing now is it's only relying on the map sensor, the amount of pressure in the manifold to try to determine how much air density is there and how much airflow is coming in. So that being said, if we saw these shoot, you know, all the way back to and, and slowly approach zeros, I would say, hey, you know what, our, our culprit may actually be the mass airflow sensor. All right, PCV disconnected. There's our nipple right there. Now, the most important part, you absolutely have to plug the manifold side, otherwise you're gonna have a humongous um, vacuum leak. I'm trying to get on it here. Here's my rubber plug that's on there. Now, just for safe measure, so we're not pulling in air either, I got this plugged, as you can see here. Try to, yep, there we go, got her in there. Again, these are still taped, these don't really affect it. My first thought was to disconnect these and see it, you know, if it had that much vapor where it was in the valve cover area, but the TSB specifically points to positive crankcase ventilation, so. All live for you guys here. Okay, turn it on. Should be at the exact same block temperature. Scan tool, everything's zeroed out. I'm gonna start it up. Now, it's gonna take a minute. It's gonna kick in the closed loop right away. You're gonna start to see action. Yep, here we go. Okay, click, kicked in the closed loop. We're still negative, right? A little less negative, but we're gonna rev it up. Okay, that's where we were, we were negative 14. Now it's in full closed loop. And now the PCM's going to, it's gonna take, you know, a minute or two or three, but it's gonna start to realize that it doesn't have as much uh, fuel in the intake air as it did. So I'm giving her a little bit of gas, even if I rev it up. Remember when we were under load, it was even worse. So here, I'll rev it up to 2000. We're gonna take a look again here. Now keep in mind, there's still gonna be a lot of fuel vapors and whatnot in the engine itself. So it is gonna take a minute, but eventually it's going to not see as much fuel and it's gonna to start to hunt back to stoichiometric with more even of trims. So we're still bouncing back and forth between positive and negative. All right, I'm gonna let her idle down for a minute. Okay, we're at about idle. I'm gonna watch her long terms. At this point, I might just have too much fuel in here. We might not actually get back to nearly zero like I was before. But I'll tell you what, we're gonna pause the video and come back in about 10 minutes should be significantly lower. All right, so we're not gonna wait. We're gonna get right into it.